Good morning, as Brian rushes in. I just want to remind you and ask you, um, uh, next Saturday, I think it is, um, to, uh, July 16th, we're going to have a decorating party for VBS. It's not going to take us long, because we've got to figure it out pretty quickly. But we could use a few more volunteers. It won't take but maybe an hour, hour and a half at the most. Um, if you will let me know that you're willing to volunteer, I'll even figure out your job, and you can come in, do your job, and then go home. So now, to Brian. Hey, great save, Debbie. <laughs> good morning. It is good to be back among you after a couple Sundays away. Uh, I've, I've been working on my dad joke all week. You know, I left in my 30s, and I'm back in my 40s. Um, but I didn't have that long away. But I do, really do appreciate the, the time away. I, I, I especially want to lift up a word of thanksgiving uh, to Debbie, who picks up so much extra when I'm away, and to the other staff who surround and work with her, like Allison. Um, but I also want to celebrate and give thanks for Jim and for Jefferson, who brought the word to you and who preached and helped lead in worship. And so I'm so grateful for your welcome to them. Uh, I know you were blessed. I I told Jim this morning when he walked in, I said, thank you. It was a great sermon. And he goes, what? So yes, I did actually go back and, and worship as best I could. I took two weekends away with no cell service. It was a real gift. You should try it in the near future if you haven't already. And so I really appreciated the time away. Uh, Debbie already mentioned Vacation Bible School and decorating. Uh, your help is needed. Even if you're not signed up, yes, you were signed up. Remember we told you that? All hands on deck. Uh, even if you can't come to set up a screen, we need you praying for those kids who are registering, for their families, um, to be here cheering them on. Next week, you will see this space be transformed. It will look a lot different. Um, the choir will not be back there because there'll be a wall. <laughs> um, but it'll be set up getting ready for Vacation Bible School. Uh, and so be in prayer already for the volunteers who have said yes to it. 
uh, who are going to be leading and walking alongside those kids for all the kids who will come to hear those stories, maybe some for the first time. Uh, and we'll celebrate and lift that up today as we gather for worship. Uh, I wanted to lift up also, as we move through the month of July, we have a couple different connection points to encourage you. Uh, one of those is this coming Friday night, we have an outdoor movie. So we're planning popcorn and an outdoor movie, and we picked a kid's movie for this week, Sing 2. If you've not seen it, it's a wonderful movie. It's a great way of celebrating songs of old and new, um, and it really is a way of us continuing to sing our way through the summer. So we have chosen some movies that involve some singing. So even if you're not a singer, you can come and just hum along. We are going to meet outside, so you know what else would you do in July besides hang outside and lose a couple pounds sweating? Um, so we're going to do that. 6.30 is when we've planned to kick that off. We'll do that up in the upper parking lot in that grass area where it's shaded. Yes, there is shade on this property, and we've tried to find where it is. So that's this Friday. Uh, our next one will be in August. Uh, also, as we gather together today, I'm thrilled that we get a chance to baptize a little one among us. Uh, Laura Catherine, or Laura Kate, as you'll hear me refer to her, will be baptized today. Uh, and so I hope that you'll join us in that celebration. We'll sing together, we'll pray, and we'll remember the faith that we have committed our lives to as we come to commit to support her uh, as she is baptized today. And so you may see the parents moving in and about uh, as Laura Kate is little. And, you know, sitting for an hour like most of us doesn't really work well. Amen? All right. And so with that said, I'm going to invite us to take a moment to take a deep breath, to invite God's presence. Whether you're here in person with us or joining online, we light a candle each week, mindful of God's presence among us as we worship God together. Let us give thanks as we gather in the name of Christ this day. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Your response is, blessed is God. 
Blessed is God who created us and loves us beyond measure. Blessed is God who calls us to stop measuring out our love. Blessed is God who speaks and tells us stories about ourselves. Blessed is God who reveals to us who we are and who we could be. Blessed is God whose compassion is poured out on every single person. Blessed is God who gives us compassion to share with every single person even people we do not know or care about. I invite you to rise as you are able in body and spirit and sing together, God of grace and God of glory. you are seated, uh, I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds as we hear today's scripture lesson. It comes to us from Colossians chapter 1. Colossians found in the New Testament, one of the letters of Paul, though we don't quite know if it was Paul that wrote it, if, if maybe one of his students. Nonetheless, I invite you to hear these words today, these words of thanksgiving. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ and Colossae, grace to you and peace from God, our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard this hope, of this hope before in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you, just it is, as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from His glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints of light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A moment of confession time. We've been texting back and forth, um, and it's my fault. <laughs> because Jack put his video where it was supposed to go, but I forgot to move it into the folder that Jonathan had access to. And so he is madly back there right now, trying to pull that video up and over. And so 
yes, you know, it's summertime. We all make mistakes, right? <laughs> Thank you. Jonathan said, texted me, and he was like, it's going to be an awkward pause. And I went, no, I'm going to confess what I did. <laughs> and, and it was me, without any doubt. Um, and so I'm going to invite the children to come forward and come down here and sit in the front pew or on the floor in front of that. Um, and as we have our awkward pause, um, at, as that you, you don't know the moment Jonathan texted me and goes, where is the children's moment? Like right as Donna was standing up. Do you know the panic that I had at that moment? <laughs> But I'm grateful for technology and that I thing that I have because I was able to move it from one Dropbox folder to another Dropbox folder from my phone and cover up for this. How are we doing, Jonathan? We're getting there. And girls, you just heard a passage read out of a letter that was sent to an early church. It's here in the very back of the Bible. See how far back it is in the New Testament? Well, there's a line in that that we're going to talk about today. We always give thanks to God. Would you repeat that after me? And would all the congregation help the kids? We always give thanks to God. Let's do it one more time. We always give thanks to God. We always give thanks to God. That's what we're going to talk about today. Why do we always give thanks to God? Well, you know, I know that your caregivers, your moms and dads, your grandparents, your teachers have been trying to teach you to say thank you for a long time. Do you remember them telling you, say thank you? Well, why do we say thank you? Let's try out a few things. First of all, we say thank you when we get a gift. You know, just a couple weeks ago, one of our grandsons, Nathan, who lives in Gilbert, Arizona, was turning 16. We sent him a card and a present. And the next day on our telephones, there was a message. Thank you. He liked his present. He was grateful. Or when somebody does something for us, we say thank you. You know, we've got a guy that comes and mows our yard. When he's done mowing the yard, we of course pay him. But more than that, we say thank you because we're grateful for the work he's done. And you know, thirdly, we even say thank you to our friends when we get together and we do fun things together. For example, over the 4th of July last week, we got together for a dinner with a friend. We both brought things to the dinner. When it was over, we said, what a wonderful dinner. Thank you for sharing it with us. We thank people for sharing things with us. You know, it's the same thing with God. We thank God for the gifts of life. We thank God for the things that God does for us, like build a world around us that's wonderful. We thank God for the families, the churches, and the communities that we have that can work together and do things for others. You know, there's a children's song that I want to try to teach you, or a poem, or a rhyme, and I want you to repeat it after me because I think it summarizes the meeting we were just talking to. Thank you, God, for the world so sweet. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the food we eat. Thank you, God, for the food we eat. Thank you, God, for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you, God, for everything. You know, that could be a prayer that we could memorize, 
learn and use at home. And right now, it's going to be the prayer that closes our time today. We always give thanks to God because God gives us wonderful gifts and God helps us work together to build a world that could be wonderful. Let's pray. And would you repeat after me? Thank you, God, for the world so sweet. Thank you, God, for the world so sweet. Thank you, God, for the food we eat. Thank you, God, God for, for the food we eat. we eat. Thank you, God, for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, God for the birds that sing. sing. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you, God, for everything. Amen. Yes, we always give thanks to God. Amen. Thank you, Jack. Now, that was worth the awkward pause, wasn't it? Absolutely. Our hymn of preparation is We Need a Faith. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing the first two stanzas of that hymn. As you are seated, I invite you to join me as we gather in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, of whom we give thanks, we come now asking that your word, as it is read and now proclaimed, would dwell deep within our hearts. Grant us hearts and minds that are open. May our hearts and minds be a gift unto your sight, O God, as we've gathered this day. We give thanks for your presence among us, and we've gathered now in the name of Christ our Lord. And the people of God said, Amen. It is good to be back with you um, as we gather for worship today, having a couple weeks away. But as I've come to be with you today, we are beginning our sermon series for the summer. But this month we're going to look at Colossians. Next month we'll take a little bit of time to look at Hebrews. So we're going to be diving into some of those less known, less read New Testament epistles and letters. Now, for all of those who are so excited you can't sit still, take a deep breath. Part of what I hope to do over the next few weeks is we're going to integrate both the text and some of the writings of Rachel Held Evans in our book, Wholehearted Faith. Today I'm going to do a little more work of introducing Colossians, but over the next few weeks I'll be pulling in some of her writings. Now sadly, this is the last book that we'll have of Rachel Held Evans. She was in her 30s and died of complications caused by pneumonia. Uh, it was really heartbreaking. She was an up-and-coming voice within the Christian community, and honestly gave witness in some ways to a transformation of somebody who had grown up in the church and rejected a lot of the fundamentalism that kind of kept her restricted, but didn't let go of her faith. She held on to it. In fact, in many ways, as you will hear if you read her books, uh, particularly Wholehearted Faith, it's written in some ways as kind of a gift to her children. I don't know that she intended it to be that. She was writing it as a way of giving witness to her own journey and transformation, but it quickly became kind of her final epistle um, to those of us who have enjoyed reading so much of her writings. Um, so I'm going to try and integrate that some over the next few weeks. Over the next seven weeks, uh, I'll be pulling some aspects of her writings in because it does speak so beautifully in many ways to what it looks like for people of faith today. 
Sometimes when we read the Scripture, I fear that we, we lose our sense of imagination and so we read it and we hear this kind of dead writings of people who were a long time ago and it can feel a little bit like we're reading a history book if we're not careful and sadly we've been doomed to repeat history because we often don't listen to the intent behind those writing them and we just get stuck hearing something that sounds laborious or so familiar that we ignore it. And I fear that sometimes that happens in Scripture. Um, but I'm grateful for people of faith who have, who have encouraged me from the time I was a youth, even into my adulthood, to re-fall in love with Scripture, to allow it to truly be uh, enlivened by the Spirit so that it has life and thanksgiving, so that it's not just dead words that we repeat without meaning. Um, the Scripture truly is alive and continues to mold and shape us, but part of the ways that it molds and shapes us is by the power of the Spirit that God brings to help us have enlivened heart and minds. We are a good people called Methodists, which means we don't check our heart or our mind at the door. Both are included in our reading of Scripture. And we believe, as a community of faith, that we come to Scripture through the lens of the tradition of the church, through our own reason, as well as our experience, and that as a community, we find meaning in that. So it's meant to give us life and hope. So today as we gather, we're hearing these words that were written in the name of Paul in Colossians 1, and it starts out, like any good letter does, with a welcome. Now, how many of you have written a letter or a card in the last year? Okay, so for the 12 of you, no, I'm kidding. <clears throat> it is a practice that's somewhat a lost art form. Um, we've gotten so quick at just quick text messages, which I'm grateful for communication, but one of the gifts of a letter is there's some intent. Unlike a text message that we might delete some and rewrite, there's something about sitting and putting pen to paper, of, of writing what we're thinking or feeling, of greeting the person that we're writing a letter to. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. He's writing to this community of faith, grace and peace to you from God our Father. And he begins with these words, in our prayers for you, we always thank God. Wouldn't you feel encouraged on the front end when, if you were to receive something that said quite literally, as we pray, we regularly give thanks for you. There's something of encouragement there that is often written into many of the letters in the New Testament, those epistles and letters that are meant to be an encouragement. It's connecting with the community. Now, it would later follow with what he hoped to instruct them on, uh, and arguably it's using a method that even Aristotle pointed out, that first we must connect to our listener, then we can tell them how we want to exhort them. Sadly, in our culture today, we just go at trying to tell them how we want them to change their minds, and no wonder nobody wants to listen because we don't know that we, they really care about us. Right? You've likely heard the phrase, people don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. That rings true. And in the letters, they were often written in such a way that, that they were trying to connect with a community. They were addressed to a community of faith. And so here... We hear these words, we thank God, we always thank God in our prayers for you. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints. Today, July the 10th, is the first Sunday for Methodist preachers in our conference who have moved. There are a handful of Methodist preachers standing in a pulpit for the first time after they have meted and greeted and likely the attendance has gone up because everybody wants to see what this new preacher's like. Right, let's talk about it honestly. Hi, Charlotte. You can come sit right over here, okay? That's fine. Have a seat. Okay, I'll be right here. Thanks. They want to see about the new preacher and his family. Thanks for that point, Charlotte. And so this, I, I'm mindful today as I was preparing to return from vacation that there are many of my colleagues um, that are walking into a pulpit in a congregation and all they have is what they have heard from others. All they have is what they have heard from others about their faith in Christ Jesus, about who they are, about the stories of who they are. And so while they try to, hey Charlotte, you need to walk right back to mommy. You see her waving? Thank you. Yeah, you're up here. Mm -hmm. 
Walk back there. Thank you. <laughs> Mommy, I'm up here. Oh. It's a real joy to have a three-year-old. Have I told you that lately? Oh, Lord. All they have is what they've heard of the stories of faith, of the communities they're gathering. And my hope is often that it's words of thanksgiving and celebration that, that those who have gone before them as the pastor or leaders have taken the time to try and share with them a little bit. But quite literally, they're going off of that, and then they're saying, but what draws us together is our faith in Christ. And it's my true hope and, and sincere prayer, not only for them, but for us, that every time we gather in worship, we are remembering that what draws us together is our common faith in Christ and how we seek to live out that faith in the world. I read Richard Rohr's daily meditation, not every single day, but with some regularity, and one of the beliefs that they have as a community is that praxis, practice over just remembering something. So the act of living out the faith is an important part of the community of the Center for Contemplation and Action. And, so, and, and they said the best response to something that's needed differently is to live better. So instead of just arguing, which seems to be very common in our day, they just say, just live differently. Show the difference by how you live. But when these words are being written, even in the name of Paul, part of the encouragement that they offer for us is what does it mean for us? What draws us together? What hope do we have in the gospel and in who God is and in Christ? That draws us into community. And in the midst of all the noise and chaos that is our world, this letter is a simple and subtle reminder, and it will be over the next few weeks, of what it means to live in light of a world where we are invited to live differently. But instead of arguing, though there is some argument that we'll have to deal with when we walk through Colossians, Paul's encouragement is much like that of Richard Rohr, live differently. Show the better by how you live out your faith. And so we'll be invited over the next few weeks to not only hear the Scripture, but allow it to take root in our hearts and minds and consider how do we live differently in light of this faith that we proclaim. Today, we will baptize a child. Every time we baptize a child, these words we say at the conclusion of the baptism, we give thanks for all that God has already given you. You hear a familiar theme from Jack's children's time, to our scripture reading, to our baptism. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ. And in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Every time we baptize a child, these words we say and remind ourselves, we recommit ourselves to continuing our own journey of growing in the knowledge and love of God, of that understanding that the author of this letter was seeking for the community to which they were writing. We want you to bear fruit and grow to come to know and understand more fully God's love for you. That's why we gather here, week in and week out. Sure, we, we seek to do good works and live that out, whether it's collecting Gatorade so that we can pass that on to our neighbors who are living in this crazy extreme heat. Amen? Um, it's lived out through making sure folks have food and walking alongside people who are going through both celebrations like weddings and baptisms and being present as we were yesterday with the family to celebrate the life of one who's gone before us as we gave thanks for one of our oldest church members, Rosemary Pageant, yesterday in this very space. All of that draws us into community, and all those are a part of it, but all of it is centered in our, our hope and our faith in Christ Jesus. It's what draws us together. Notice I didn't say what draws us together is that we all have the same idea of who we should elect as our next president, that we, who we should identify with. It didn't say we all had the same idea of how we should invest our money or not invest our money. All those things we work on, we struggle with, we talk about, 
Yes, I don't believe that the adage of religion and politics should be checked at the door. Maybe that's why I caused conflict in my family. Maybe. But I believe we should have enough of a community where we care about one another, we talk about those things, but we never forget, we never forget what draws us together as a community to begin with. And that is the God who gives us life, for whom we live and we give thanks, just as Jack invited our children to do. Because none of us do this thing called life on our own. Amen? We do it together, and we do it because of the God who truly gives us breath within our lungs and who gives us life to share. And that already gives us a different way of approaching the world. One that, yes, sometimes feel, feels very much in opposition to the voices screaming at us on TV and radio and on our podcasts and on our phones, but it is a voice that I hope doesn't get lost so that every time we gather for worship we remember that the God who breathed life into us desires that every day, not just today. Amen? And so today, let's prepare our hearts and minds as we recommit our faith and we welcome a new little one among us. I'm going to invite the family to come forward so we can baptize Laura Catherine, Laura Kate. So Adam and Katie and Addison, if you'll come forward. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we were initiated into Christ's holy church. We were incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. I present to you Laura Catherine Black for baptism. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, uh, her parents, Adam and Katie, to answer these questions. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, say, I do. Perfect. I love it. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, say, I will. <laughs> she is. I love it. Do you, as Christ's body of the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. If so, say we do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this child and family now before you in your care? And if you will join me, with, with God's, God's help, help we, we will proclaim, proclaim the, the good news and, and live according to the example of Christ. Christ. We, we will, will surround this child with a with community of love and, and forgiveness. forgiveness that they she may, may grow, grow in, in her trust service of God to others and we be found pray. faithful in her trust. <laughs> Sorry. We will pray, pray for, for her, her. <laughs> that they, they she may, may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. You ever trip over your tongue, Addison? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Glad we're on the same page. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God, the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We're going to pray now over the water, Addison. So if you want to come up here and just put your hand next to it. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, should have been the time in which children and toddlers were around, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing Sing to the Lord, all the earth, tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and the one who receives it, to wash away her sin and clothe her with righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All thanks to you, Eternal Father, through the Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Now, standing next to me, for those who may not be able to see you, this is Addison. This is Laura Kate's sister. And as a big sister, you're probably going to be one of the first people that go with her when she goes to vacation Bible school or Sunday school. So I want you to help me. We're going to pour the water before we baptize her. So I'm going to have you help me, okay? So if you'll grab the handle here. And now we're going to pour it right in here, okay? Keep come on, all of it in there. There we go. All right, great job. Yeah. Okay. All right. And now we're going to try. Can you want to come to me for a minute? Mm, maybe not. There, you go. there we go. Here we go. We just for a second, okay? Okay. Look, 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 look. Look. You want to touch the water? See, you can touch it. You want to show her, Addison? See, you'll be one of the first people to help her see and experience a lot of things. And so, Laura Catherine, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you want to hold? Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, I'm going to invite the family to come forward that would like to. And as a congregation, if you'll place your hands out towards her, we're going to pray for her. Next usher in training, right here. All right, and if you'll come around, if you'll just place hands together, and if you can't reach her, you can place hands on the shoulder of the person in front of you. You ready? Okay, Laura Kate. Laura Kate, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Okay. And now we're going to sing together a blessing for Laura Kate. You go back.
Now it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ, and if you will join me in these words. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and get made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Amen. And now we enter into our time of prayer. As always, I invite you to put that which is in your heart and lift it up through a deep breath to God. And then exhale, knowing that God has that joy or concern already in God's arms. For our silent prayer today, I'm going to invite you to pray for Laura Kate, for her family, and for the many ways in which we will be able to show her how to live as a child of God. Will you pray for Laura Kate? Eternal God, rescuer of the weak, given every reason to judge us, you seek justice for us. You stand with the poor in the ditches where we have discarded them. You plant your word of truth in the one who gives us unexpected answers. Jesus Christ, word of truth, you will not pass us by, but stoop to lift us up and carry us out of our pain. You love the faithful enough to tell us stories which will shatter our complacency and send us forth to carry mercy to others. Holy Spirit, giver of mercy, you carry, your hope, you carry hope in your mouth and breathe it into our souls. You take us by the hand, leading us out of the ditches we have dug for ourselves into the brightly lit streets of the kingdom you pray for us in every moment, especially when we are unable to pray for ourselves. God and community, holy in one, hear us as we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we gather together today in worship, one way that we pause each week is to say, how might we offer our lives as well as God's tithes? Today, uh, you're going to get a chance to meet one of our uh, Boy Scouts here at Bellevue United Methodist Church. His name is Justice. Where are you, Justice? He's here in worship with us. Um, and so Justice has recorded a short video to talk about his Eagle Scout project that he's going to be beginning at the end of this week. Um, and it's connected to the food bank. And so I'm going to let him share, which you'll see just briefly in the video. Uh, and after church, you'll have a chance to actually meet Justice. And he can talk to you more about the projects. If you're interested, uh, he'll be out in the Welcome Center. And so Justice has recorded this video for us to kind of hear a little bit. And after the video, we'll actually put a picture of the rendering of what he's talking about. And so I'll turn to Justice now. Good morning. I'm Justice Schaaf, a Life Scout in Troop 624 here at Bellevue United Methodist Church. I'm here to talk to you in hopes that you will help support an exciting project I'm working on with the Bellevue Community Food Bank to upgrade their food collection system. We'll begin construction this month on an outdoor collection cabinet to replace the shopping cart that is currently used. This collection cabinet will help the food bank um, collect food in a more safe and secure way. So please um, come join us on one of our project work days, Friday and Saturday, July 15th through 16th, or the next weekend, July 22nd through 23rd, 
from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. right here at the church. If you'd like to help in another way, cash donations are also welcome. Ace Hardware has very generously agreed to supply lumber for the project, but more funds are required for other expenses. If you have any questions, please just ask me right after the service. I'm happy to talk about this project and the food bank. So thank you very much for listening, and please have a wonderful rest of your day. As you'll see here, as a, just a snapshot of the rendering uh, of that project, it will be right outside the Welcome Center here. Um, the way that we described it was essentially think about the little libraries that you see in neighborhoods that are built uh, on steroids. Uh, so it's a much larger piece with the drawers on the bottom actually being on really heavy-duty casters that will pull out. And inside there will be crates that food can be set in so that they can easily be changed out when people donate uh, food. So Robin Dillon has been a part of that. She's our food bank coordinator here at the Bellevue Community Food Bank. Uh, I have sat down with Justice a few times. Uh, our leadership board had a chance to meet with him and approve the project. And so now as we move towards that, I just wanted to lift up that this is one of those second mile gifts. If you would like to contribute some towards that, um, you can do that as a second mile gift if you want to write on the envelope. Just make sure it says for the Boy Scout pro Eagle Scout project, that will help us so that Bob doesn't look at me and go, what's this for? Um, and so Bob will, he, he's really good at figuring things out. But let's not make it a quiz. Um, so if you would, if you are interested in participating, if you want to hear more about the project, uh, Justice is a phenomenal young man. I'm really grateful that we have him here as a part of our scout troop and his leadership and design. He's actually hand-drawn it out on graph paper with measurements to figure out all the wood needed. And uh, I'm so grateful that Ace Hardware, our local partner, has agreed to supply the majority of the lumber. Um, but there's still more that needs to happen to pull that together, like screws. A pile of lumber doesn't magically just create something. Um, and some of the casters and things like that. And so if you're interested in hearing more about the project or even helping with one of the build days, please see Justice After Church. He'll be out here in the Welcome Center or just outside the door where that will be built. With that said, let us give thanks to God as we receive today's offertory by our choir.
May these gifts which we offer be used to bring justice to the weak, a family to the orphan, fairness to the outcast, and hope to the needy. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so as we go out into the world, let us sing together, I'm going to live so God can use me. I invite you to hear this, this closing prayer written by John Hunter in Scotland in the 19th century. Grant, O Lord, that what has been said with our lips we may believe in our hearts, and that what we believe in our hearts we may practice in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May you go now in the grace and love of God, that you might be a sign of love to those for whom love is a stranger. We've gathered in the name of Christ. Now may you be a sign of Christ's love in the world. Go forth this day. Amen. Amen. Go now.